All right, we have Sean Kelly with us today, and he is a candidate for Sheriff of Pocahontas County. Sean, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I've uh, been born and raised right here in Pocahontas County. I've lived uh, Hillsboro all my life. I've been a correctional officer at Denmark for 11 years, and uh, now I'm raising my three daughters right here in Hillsboro. I love Pocahontas County. I think we're all fortunate to live here, and uh, I would like now to be part of the political system and try to uh, grease the wheels about what's going on here a little bit. I don't like the way the courthouse is going. I don't like the way the sheriff's department is handling itself. And I think we need a good common sense and normal approach. Well, I agree with that. Well, uh, yeah, you were, you were born and raised in Hillsboro? Yes, sir. I lived in the, the house I live in now. My parents are dead and gone. The house I live in now is the one I was raised in. Really? So, yes, sir. I'm watching my kids play in the same yard I played in. Yes. And you got very three, fortunate. You got three children. Three daughters. Three do oh. Eight, ten, and twelve. Eight, ten, and twelve. Now you're also married. Have a wife. I've uh, been married thirteen years. My wife Cynthia. She's from Elkins. Really? Um, I got to meet her. I, I like her. Um, you worked at Denmar as a correctional officer. Um, that means uh, likely you've already had a background check, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I've had all the background checks and the correct training. I know. I am a... Uh, so I, I don't, probably don't need to ask you if you would be hiring felons no, for sir. deputies. No, sir. I would want to have officers that the people of Pocahontas County would be proud of. Right. And I believe in all situations we should try to hire local. Well, I do, too. I mean, nobody's taking care of us over in Randolph County. Right. They don't, cut, they don't put an ad in our paper up here in Pocahontas County saying that they got a deputy position open down there in Lewisburg. we got to take care of ourselves. So I would take it that you're not too pleased that, uh, that uh, the current sheriff has had to go all the way to California and, Tex uh, to, California and to Texas to get his deputies. I think that, uh, that goes to show what kind of police department you're running when you don't even have local people that want to work in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure I, I know a lot of people personally, you know, men around my age that would that would like to become deputies and become law enforcement, but not not in the situations in here right now. I mean, they feel that they're jumping on a sinking ship. Hey, yeah, the, yeah, they feel like they're jumping. Uh, I can understand that. I see a lot of that, uh, that type of thing. In fact, it uh, Sean, it's almost been a an embarrassment to be a deputy sheriff. Yes, sir. And to think that, well, another thing, you know, I don't like the idea of having to get somebody's criminal record expunged uh, so you can, they can make it through the academy. I'm sure there's plenty of good, hardworking citizens that don't have any criminal record that would like to help their county. That's exactly the way I feel. We don't have to go importing people, do we? Right, we don't have to hire criminals or import. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that because that makes me very happy that, that uh, you think in that way. Uh, what do you think about this sheriff's ox? You heard today, you, you and I were in the meeting today and they were talking about hiring them to do transport, to transport children, juveniles, right. and to transport uh, mental, uh, mental patients. What do you I, think about that? I'm trying to educate myself more on that topic over the last few days and I will over the next couple weeks to decipher the difference between volunteer deputies and auxiliary. If it comes down to apparently we're paying volunteers, which obviously we're not supposed to do, right. then I would not do that. And if someone could point that out to me and I was sheriff and say, hey, it says right here we can't do that, yeah. then I would no longer do that. If there's a basis we can have volunteers and they wanted to truly be volunteers, I would lovingly accept their help. Yeah, and we can use all the volunteers we can. Right. I really agree. My concern with the sheriff's office is that I've seen no evidence of any training. Mm -hmm. I've seen... Uh, actually no evidence of real qualifications on their part and someday we're going to have someone get loose and somebody's going to get hurt and I don't want to see that happen. And who's liable at that point I wonder? That's right. Mr. That's Jones? Right. I believe he is personally liable. So I was disappointed today when he when he uh, determined that he was going to spend county money for People that are supposed to be volunteering. Am I understanding that we do have more deputies now than we've ever had? Oh yeah, yeah, we got plenty of deputies. So we should have plenty of people to do the necessary work. Yeah. Without auxiliary. We have lots of deputies, and uh, of what course, is that number now? 
You know, I heard at one time as many as 14, but I don't know what it is now. See, we lost Totten. And, uh, well, th that's a good point to bring up the situation with Totten. We don't know a whole lot about that, but we understand it's an investigation. I wanted to ask you as a sheriff's candidate if you found out if, and that's just hypothetical, but if you found out you had a staff member who was doing th inappropriate things, how long would it take you to get rid of him? Would it be three and a half years as Janice took? No, sir. On the, on the first allegation, I would have him put on unpaid leave and have an investigator check it out. Yeah. I mean, people aren't always guilty, but if they are, you have to find out. And if they're in a position where they're supposed to be conducting themselves in a professional manner and they're not, then you need to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. And in situations like this in the public eye, I believe it is futile to try to make things like that disappear. They are always going to eventually come out. It's trying to hide stuff. Yeah, and that... So you cannot do it to begin with. That's right. And this is a small county. We know each other's business. And uh, to cover things up just means to carry it on, you know. Well, uh, what is it about the... Uh, the Corrections Academy, I don't know anything about that, but I know that, uh, how long is that? It's six weeks now, it was four or five when I went, plus additional And uh, do they give you uh, personal training in martial arts? Yes, sir, it's very, it's very closely mimicked off what like the state police would go through. Right. We have firearms training, we have training on how to talk to people, how to talk people down, how to deal with irate people, yeah. physical training. How to be courteous. Oh, yeah. Ah. Well, that's, a, that's another thing. I understand that we are all public servants, and once I'm elected, I, I, I want to get along with people. Shouldn't be people shouldn't be nervous or scared yeah. when they see the cops coming. That's you know, right. They should be. They should feel more at ease if anything else. And I don't want to run and look down your nose, sheriff's department. Right. I mean, my wife made the joke that it'd take me forever to get home every evening because I like to stop talk to everybody I see. Well, that's good. That's, that's exactly the way it should be. We should feel comfortable with the man or woman that we elect to public office it, that yeah. you can talk to them. And be proud that's where your money's going. I know. They're doing good, the machine's working, and he's a nice guy. Yeah. That's absolutely true. None of those three things are present right now. No. No, we've got a pretty pretty bad situation going on. Um, let's see what else I wanted to... Is there anything particular besides what I mentioned uh, that you're concerned about with the Sheriff's Department? I, don't want to leave I believe the room. overall attitude has just deteriorated until it can't function any longer. Yeah. The entire guts of the courthouse, the, the taste of the seat seems to be in everybody's mouth. Yeah. And in a sheriff's position, you have to be a person who can not only do the job, but you have to be a person who can get along with people yeah. and can be social with people. You, you, once, once you establish those defensive attitudes and the, there's, there's negative lines, mm -hmm. that, those are very hard to get rid of. I and mean, I don't think anybody's interested in getting rid of the line, but they're interested in getting rid of him. Yeah. Well, someone said the other day they thought he was trying to run. He was trying to run the county police department like the Marine Corps, and they didn't feel that that was really appropriate. Well, Pocahontas County is full of citizens and good people, not Marines. <laughs> now that is good. That is good. I mean, we don't we don't we don't need boot camp. Right. We, we need a sheriff's department, and this isn't Harlem. This is Pocahontas County. Yeah. And as far as the now officers, uh, in my answer to the paper, I believe I put, I believe a number, a maximum number of seven deputies. We could probably even shave that down one. I want to do as much as I can with the police department to free up enough money for other things. Yeah. And if that can be a drug rehab or a day report or anything, I mean, my 11 years in corrections has showed me that not only is the prison system completely backed up, but it, is, it don't work. I mean, the, the day they discharge, they're, they're going to go right, right back to their criminal activity. They call so we've got to try to fix it here at the root. We can't send them away and they come back in three years fixed. It don't happen. They just come back in three years. Yeah. Well, we heard an interesting uh, discussion of the day report today at the county commission meeting that you, both of you and I were there. I found it very interesting. They brought three people in that have had a successful experience with day, day report. So it, it's definitely saving the county some money. Well, I think any, any, any of those routes have to be looked down. Yeah. If the only other alternative is locking them up, which we can't afford to do and doesn't work, yeah. then we have to look at all these other routes. We have to see what we can do. And we can't get rid of all the drugs and we can't get rid of all the druggies. We have to change this at the root as far as the want for this. Yeah. The entire youth of the county is almost in a slump of depression. Yeah. Well, um, what about, and I know a lot of people are really uh, in agreement with what they were discussing about today, about prescription drugs. 
Um, what can we do about the prescription drugs? I believe we need, uh, like they said, the county commissioner about uh, taking some of the recovering addicts to schools to talk to people. We've really got to attack this in, almost in the schools, in the high school, in the high school to the grade school period. Yeah. Well, one of the things that uh, one of the things that we have that really bothers me when there is an um, an overdose and a kid dies. I had a one of my students died that I was working with. Why is it there's such a tendency to want to cover it up? And so they have the, all this, they have this grief, people are saying, but the elephant room in the room is drugs. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 does that ha what does that say for us? Are we covering stuff up? Well, especially for the sheriff's department, I'm sure you don't even want to acknowledge things like that are happening under your watch. No, that's right. I mean, it's better, better left undiscussed. But well, we've even had cases, uh, Sean, where we've had deputies uh, OD right in the office. Well, that'd yeah. be the last time they were a deputy in that office if I was sheriff. I agree with you. I mean, we need to have, you, you, you got to have some social respect when mm -hmm. you're wearing that uniform. Yeah. And people have to know that that's where their money's going. They need to feel good about it. Yeah. They don't need to think, oh, that junkie and who's he sleeping with and this, that, and the other. They need to be proud people. And there is, there is good, honest people that want to be deputies in this county that are good family people, mm -hmm. and they don't want nothing to do with what's going on right now. That's they right. are going to dirty themselves by hopping on this. Yeah. And I feel that once this is, once this is cleaned up, I don't think it'll be a problem finding your local deputies. I, don't think, I think the entire attitude of the courthouse will be easily changed when they see that they're not being assaulted and watched. Right. Well, you know, and I, I like your use of the word clean. That's a motto for my campaign is that it's time to clean Pocahontas again. You know what I see May being? I see May is spring cleanup. Yeah. Now we got a lot of cleaning up to do in the sheriff's office and I appreciate you giving me an interview. We've got some other places that we need to clean up, but probably, I believe if I were rating it, Sean, the sheriff's office is just about as dirty as it's ever been. I would agree. I've lived here all my life and I don't ever remember people mm -hmm. having the attitude and talking about it the way they have been over the last few years. Yeah. Well, I know some of them were uh, said, "Well, he's neo-Nazi." What's what's the word for that? What's uh, how do you think they got that? Well, it's very easy how they got that, and that's the main reason I wanted to talk with you today. I, that, yeah. That's that's the thing in the room that I want to squash. A lot of the other, you know, some of the other candidates have some things in their past that are embarrassed and ashamed of oh, yeah. things they've done wrong. Very embarrassed. And I doubt, they're, I, I doubt they're going to sit down here and have an interview with you. Oh, no, no. You're they're probably far too one. scared to do, to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah. I wanted to address that immediately. I bought property up there in 2001, me and my wife, right next door to the National Alliance. I had a four-wheeler. I was a young man. I run around up there a lot. I got to know those guys. I rode four-wheelers with them. I hung out with a lot of them. A lot of my normal friends just from here in the county, everybody mingled together. If those would have been Muslims or Mennonites or whatever they would have been, I would have been liked to them and got along with them. They right. never asked me to do anything illegal. They never preached stuff to me. They never tried to change who I was or nothing like that. And yeah, I was I was I lived up there. I still own property up there, right mm -hmm. next to it. I, I rent it. Yeah. But for all the people who can look at me and be like, well, I know this and I know that, then then come sit down in front of me and let's have that discussion. Yeah. Because there's no factual thing that anybody's going to be able to say, I've done to somebody, I've said to somebody, I've never stole off nobody, I've right. never done nothing wrong to anybody. I've lived here all my life, I've conducted myself in the, the way my grandparents raised me to be. I'm not ashamed of any of my actions and I don't have anything to hide. And anybody who wants to ask me anything or discuss anything, I would love to politely and calmly sit down and have a conversation like we're having right now. Yeah. And if the worst thing that all the people that is running against me can say is that I'm a Nazi or I'm this, that, or the other, then they must be in pretty poor shape. Oh, yeah. Well, some of them are pretty black pots. Oh, you know? yeah. We've got some pretty black pots around, you know, and it's, it's a shame. Well, so... Basically, you're a Hillsboro boy. I'm a Hillsboro boy, born and born raised. Born and raised in Hillsboro and proud of it. Very proud. I wouldn't leave this county for nothing. I'm very, very excited that my kids are going to live here. Yeah. Like I said, i got a 12-year-old daughter. That kind of spurred me a little more to get involved in this. I don't want the county four years from now Yeah. looking like it does right now. Right. Well, Sean, I think it's a good thing that you're doing. I'm glad that you had the courage to run. Actually, I like to see lots of people run. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's how the system's supposed to work. That's the way it works. That's what they call democracy. That's, uh, someone said, if you really saw how laws were made, it, uh, you wouldn't like what you, you've seen. But, but I like this. I like the fact we've got competition in this thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty well known. I haven't hidden the fact that I think Janice is a lousy sheriff. Mm -hmm. And I think that he's got a bad attitude. But that's not the reason I wanted to talk to you. I, wanted to, I want the people of this county to know Sean Kelly. Well, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And anybody who has any questions, I would love to I give me a call. I have your class, and I can, I can definitely recommend you. Well, I appreciate it very much. How tall are you? Six foot five and a quarter. That's another thing. I would like to, I mean, I'm in good shape. I mean, yeah. I know that the sheriff don't necessarily have too much hands-on stuff unless he wants to. I, I want to be out there. I want to have my hands and stuff. I don't want to just turn the deputies loose. Or First off, I'd like to have deputies I can trust to turn loose. Right. But in the current situation, I want to be out there. I want to see what's going on. I want to talk to people. I want, I, I want to be involved. I want to take advantage of, you know, I'm a healthy young guy. And I want this. I want the county to be better. This is the county I've lived in all my life, and I'm going to live here forever. You made a you made a, quite a sacrifice. You had to take time and take. I've taken I've taken un, unpaid leave mm -hmm. ever since the day I signed to get on the ballot. Right, that's cutting two thousand dollars a month. Oh for yeah, my family. I can imagine how hard it. You must have a good wife that can oh, support you in that. She's my best friend. She's my best friend. That's and how long? You say you've been married thirteen? Yes, we did just a little bit over nineteen when we got married. Huh. So you would be about 31 now, right? I just turned 32, yeah. 32. Well, that is a good age. And, uh, but I'm very fortunate to have a great family. I was raised by great people. I live in a, a great little town and a great little county. And just got a little mud on the top. I need to clean up. Yeah. And then, the, you know. We're well, we're working on the cleanup. All of us. Yes, sir. We're going to be working on the cleanup. And I wish you the best of luck.